You're listening to Alabama Tradition with Ryan Fowler and Martin Houston on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. Teen National Championships. 27 SEC titles. 131 first team All Americans. 70 postseason appearances. 39 postseason victories. This is Alabama football. And this is Alabama Tradition with Martin Houston and Ryan Fowler on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. We're going to talk about Alabama you know, trying to find a way to get to uh, repeat status. We've also got a couple of coaches that have been named officially through the University of Alabama. Uh, that will be a big topic of conversation. A lot of things that we'll get into. Senior Bowl happening right now, and uh, we're going to be talking about leading into this NFL draft. We will also spend a lot of time coaching, talking about Coach Paul Bear Bryant. And from a coach perspective with Chris Landry, uh, can help us understand exactly the impact. And uh, we'll share some memories we will also take phone calls. We'd love to have you at 205-342-9904, 205-342-9904 as we travel throughout this edition of Alabama Tradition. Uh, for those who are tuning in, Martin Houston uh, still not with me uh, because he is running for mayor of the city of Tuscaloosa. So uh, according to FCC regulations, he cannot be on uh, why he's seeking a public office, and uh, that's okay. We're abiding by that particular rule, uh, but I'm so grateful to be able to to welcome in Chris Landry, LandryFootball.com. Uh, Chris, welcome in to Alabama Tradition. I hope you're having a great day. I'm having a great day. Always good to be with you, Ryan, and uh, a lot going on, as you mentioned. I've got senior bowl duties this week, heading back uh, there in the morning, not too far a trip. Um, we've got seven Alabama guys there, a lot of other players there, of course, and um yeah, a lot going on. You mentioned the coaching staff and um, obviously the the finishing of recruiting. Just just a lot going on in football right now. That uh, I always tell folks, it's it's sometimes it's the busiest time when we get towards playoffs and everything because you got games, you've got coaching searches, you've got recruiting, you've got the prep beginning of the preparations of the draft. I mean, it just it's nonstop during this time of year. Well, Chris, let, I tell you what, we, we do this uh, normally at the end. I, I say we do both. Uh, why don't we start out talking about the website and invite people how they can get more information from LandryFootball.com. Very simple. Uh, LandryFootball.com is where you want to go. We've got a lot of free stuff. We've got access to our Twitch TV channel. You can click on the follow Chris on Twitch. You, you can get right there and watch the TV shows. In fact, this show is right live on Twitch uh, right now. You can get all of our podcasts. We've got free information, but we also have for, for a very, very nominal fee, um, basically access to your own scouting department, coaching department for less than the magazine subscription. It's less than $10 a month. It's even less than that if you take advantage of the year offer. And we got our scouting season offer up now. So if you are into recruiting and you want to know about the players that Alabama or anybody else signs and truly what they're all about, we've got that for you. You, you want to understand about how you evaluate roster evaluations of how things are meshing together as they get on to playing on the college game, got that for you. You want to know how these players translate to the NFL, we've got that for you. Um, you know, So it's everything from recruiting to college football to um, the draft to NFL analysis of all the games and uh, during the course of the season, free agency, um, coaching searches. What are you getting? What are the styles of the coaches as the, the coaching changes? Carousel constantly changes as we've got most of them filled at this point, but the assistant coaches are, you know, very, very active still. So we got all it's one stop shopping football. And it's like, again, having your own coaching and scouting department, for less than a magazine subscription. So LandryFootball.com is where you want to go um, for all of that. 
So we are talking, if you love football, you're going to love LandryFootball.com. And the, the content that uh, Chris is talking about, he takes his expertise and kind of mixes all that together as uh, we continue to move uh, onward here. Uh, Chris, let's go to Coach Bryant. Um, I'd love for you to share a memory at first, and then I want to get into maybe how he impacted the game and how he shaped uh, the game of college football that we know now. Do you have a memory of Coach Bryant? Well, I do. Uh, not a lot of personal interaction as um, I was not coaching actively when when he was coaching. But growing up in South Louisiana, I saw the impact uh, that he had as he, you know, LSU could never beat him or his teams in Baton Rouge or anywhere. It was not, not many people did. But Coach Charlie McClendon, who I got to know uh, very, very well, played for Coach Bryant at Kentucky, along with Howard Schnellenberger, Bay Perilli, and those great Kentucky teams that he had and his brief stint that Coach Bryant was there. Um, so I got to know him through several assistants that worked for him. So I felt like I knew him, but I never knew what it was like. I also got to know him very well by a very good friend. And for those of you, to those of our listeners that listened last week when I came on, um, John Mitchell was, was a guy that was a good friend that we coached together at LSU. John Mitchell played for Coach Bryant. John Mitchell coached as a young coach for Coach Bryant. I also spent time, um, shared office space with Ozzie Newsom. We worked together and came up in scouting and coaching together. Ozzie tells stories about being recruited by Coach Bryant, playing for Coach Bryant, and obviously having a great relationship with him. So there's a number of people that I've come in close contact with. I guess the best thing that I, there are a number of ways that I can describe Coach Bryant. The but I think it was. The, innov way, the, the innovative ways that he did things that were so unique. Different different world at that time in a different way that you went about coaching. You didn't have scholarship limitations. You did things differently. I mean, when he started coaching, you didn't have film review sessions. I mean, it wasn't to Coach Paul Brown brought in the film. I mean, he, he, most guys went out and they coached on the field. And then they met a little bit, talked about what they're going to do in practice. And it, it, it wasn't quite the same as it is now with all the modern technology, of course, but with coach Bryant, he always had an edge. He always was looking at ways to get better. He always used to tell coaches. I'm told that I would never hire a coach on my staff unless that coach knew more football than I did. And what that meant was people say, oh, he's just being humble. Well, yeah, I think there's a lot of it. But in other words, if he was going to hire somebody to coach the offensive line or coach the defensive line or run the entire offense, he wanted somebody that knew more because he was so confident in himself that Coach Bryant wanted to lead. He wanted to be innovative. He wanted to, he was constantly trying to reinvent himself. And he did. You know, when Coach Bryant came in, he built a program and, but he had some lean years. I mean, he had some years where, I mean, it wasn't very good, and he reinvented itself. And can you imagine ever being able to accomplish what he did the year that he put the wishbone in and he went to Texas and he got, he learned it and, and he kept it quiet? I mean, you'd never be able to do that today, and he did it, but he was always thinking ahead. And then it's little things like, you know, he was one of the first ones to say, we're going to have coaching clinics. What's coaching clinics? Well, he would – because he was so confident in himself, he would have high school coaches that he would pay that for the high school coaches. He'd feed them. He'd put them up in hotel rooms. He'd give them mileage money. High school coaches would come in and the Alabama coaches would share ideas with high school coaches. Yeah. We're going to help them because they're going to help us recruit. And when we go recruit one of their boys, we want them to be on our side. So we're going to do more. And, there was old things. Fact, it caused some NCAA rule changes. He would give them goodie bags with, you know, sweatsuits and things and all that. And and well, that it was all genius. He was marketing. He 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 do that. Go back to the high schools. The coaches would be wearing Alabama hats and T-shirts and all that kind of stuff. That's all good. And he wanted to teach them exactly what he was running. So if he taught guys, I mean. For years and years, all those high schools that were running the wishbone were because 
if they're running the wishbone in high school, then we are, we're able to evaluate exactly what we're going to be asking them to do here. So it makes it an easier evaluation. So we're going to help them. They're going to help us. Uh, a lot of things that he did that was very, very unique in how he went about, um, you know, building a program and doing things and thinking ahead and being ahead of the game. He was uh, really, really transformative in, 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 in those times. So, uh, you know, I also thought it was genius when he got the job at Alabama. Um, and those of a certain age remember that, you know, it was every Sunday afternoon, it was the Alabama replay. And this was back in the day, Ryan, when, when they had only one college game on Saturday, what did coach Bryant do? He negotiated the rights where he owned Alabama's rights for the game footage that were not live. That was genius. So wow. it was like if you had to watch, you didn't see Alabama play unless you were in the stadium. So on Sunday on the Bear Bryant show, when he'd sit there and he'd open up the golden flake potato chip or popcorn bag and he'd dump it in and he'd chew and he'd mumble and he'd drink that Coca-Cola and oh boy, that's good there, Charlie. You know, and then he'd sit there and he'd say, Bingo, Charlie, there's as always, there's old Ryan Fowler there from Tuscaloosa, and boom, bingo. And he'd do that. Well, all that film, anybody would come in and watch that because you didn't see the game on TV before. And and he actually owned those rights. How smart was that? So he was ahead of his time on a lot of things that he did. And you know, back then you could recruit as many players as you wanted. He'd find out that Mississippi State was recruiting some kid in Biloxi that was pretty good. He didn't know about it. He'd send one of his GAs down to sign that kid. He didn't know whether the kid could play or not. But in case he did, he wanted to have them. And they'd, they'd recruit 25 running backs a year and figure out who can play then. So I think the fact that he was innovative, um, you know, ahead of his time was his real genius, more than just the pure X's and O's, which he was very good at. Uh, but a towering figure, man. I, I'd never forget being in Tiger Stadium and <laughs> he'd, he'd lean on that goalpost. And for people who didn't know him, and he was big. He was a big man. He'd lean on those, you know, with his sport coat and that tie that was way short. And he just had that hat down and he, he'd lean up against the goalpost. And, and, uh, and there were some LSU fans that were throwing oranges at him because they're one year LSU was playing. And if they went, they were in good shape to go to the orange bowl. That was the thing they did. They threw an orange, orange hit coach Brian in the shoulder. It dropped down to his seat. What did coach Brian do? He bent down. He picked it up. He started peeling it and he's eating an orange while watching warm ups. He was John Wayne. Cool. I mean, he was, he was everything to those of us that aspire to be coaches. Well, and I asked Joe Namath, uh, I'll never forget it. I, I, I mean, I can almost like quote it. Uh, I said, what was your first impression of Coach Paul Bear Bryant? He said, an extra large man. I mean, you walk up and he's like a giant. <laughs> and and we were talking about it, Chris, with uh, just different people. Uh, Bill Searcy was an offensive lineman. He, he's probably about, I don't know, probably 315, 320. You know, he was a big offensive lineman for the 70s. Very versatile guy, could play guard, could play – uh, played some tackle, uh, played, you know, at center. But uh, he said, you know, one of the things that Coach Bryant would do is he said he cut the couch, he cut the legs off of the couch. He said, so not only was he 6'5", uh, but he would overtower you when you're sitting there in that in that couch in his office. He cut the legs off of the couch <laughs> where he would <laughs> overtower you, and he was so intimidating. Yeah, you know, and I think, you know, of course, you can see the replica of his office, but yeah, that was kind of set up to where you know I didn't know about the legs on it. That's that's great because that was kind of his his way of, uh, and he was larger than life. Some of the footage that you know he always wore the fedora, except when he was like playing the Superdome. Because I went to several games. I was at the the Penn State game in the Superdome, the famous Sugar Bowl game. He never wore a hat inside because Mama said to never wear a hat inside. So he he never wore it in the Superdome. And I don't know that there wasn't really – the other domes weren't there. I don't know that he – I don't remember him playing in the Astrodome because there wasn't any big games there. Superdome was the one stadium where it was indoors, all of them were outdoors. He had the fedora, but during the um, – during practice, he wore a ball cap, you know, I love him ball cap. He'd come out of the – you know, with the, the, the long pant khakis from the tower. 
and he'd come down and he'd run a block and he's running a blocking technique and he'd get down and it, you got guys that are fully padded and he gets in and he's ramming the shoulder and he's moving big guys back. And, you know, at this point he was like 62, 63 and they're looking at thing and good Lord. I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna, this old man's gonna kill him and the hat's falling and he's there, but he's just this big old giant of a guy figuratively and literally. And it was, uh, you know, the whole him in the tower and he just had down from the tower. And it just is, it, it, it's in an era to Ryan, where we, as a society, we revered people more. We didn't question authority as much, you know, back in those days, the coach Lombardi, coach Paul Brown, coach Hallis, coach Bryant, you know, all the greats what they, whatever they said went, you know, they said, do something you didn't ask how or why you just did it and i i always kind of compared him to john wayne he was a john wayne type figure that you know it didn't you didn't have criticism back then i mean you didn't have talk shows you certainly didn't have social media and you know he'd sit down and you know the press conferences they tell me in those days were just a big round table and they had maybe five or six media people and they'd sit down and have Jack Daniels and Coke, which was his go-to, and they'd talk, and he'd say stuff. And, of course, back then, you printed what they kind of told you to print. You didn't talk about things that he didn't say was okay to talk about. And But it was a different world and um, than it is today where you're managing a lot of different things. And recruiting was – you got recruited by Alabama or anybody. You were honored, and now it's – you know, it's it's just a different world. But – you know, of course, we're talking about him today. I remember January 26 because um, it's the day that my my dad was my dad's birthday, who I lost in 2004. But I remember when Coach Bryant passed. Um, I remember it was actually my dad that told me it hurt him. My dad was a hardware salesman, and he heard it on the radio when he was working. And, Came home and he told us and um, and I heard it then. And then I'd forgotten that it's a year anniversary that Kobe Bryant passed. I didn't realize it was the 26th that Kobe Bryant had passed. So so um, it's a day that I remember and I still remember the, the day of the funeral and everything. And uh, for those in Alabama, everyone will remember it. But I remember, you know, it's national news. It's everybody there. And it was like you talking about a who's who of football everybody came in from everywhere, all four corners of the country to pay their respects to coach Brian. He was, uh, he was a larger than life human being. And, um, and, and certainly the most iconic figure in, in, I think in probably football history, certainly in college football history, the only guy that would be close would be Lombardi. And that's probably has to do with more with NFL films and, and, and kind of how his legacy was built and build on the Packers in the day. We are talking a lot of Alabama Crimson Tide football with Chris Landry, LandryFootball.com. This is Alabama tradition. We will break here. We will come back, and we will take phone calls at 205-342-9904. Darlene, North Carolina, will be first up. Terry in Richmond, Virginia, will be second up, and we'll get to all the other callers coming up in just a couple of minutes. Alabama tradition, the past, present, and future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Get 15% off a set of Brake Mess Select, Select Pro, or Import Direct brake pads and two rotors now at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Nukes Eatery, located at 205 University Boulevard. Call ahead orders at 205-758-2455 on all the convenient apps. Have your food delivered right to you. Grilled and toasted sandwiches, handcrafted pizzas like the sausage and pepperoni, the Nukes Q pizza, Mediterranean, the five cheese, the pepperoni, and so much more. Great salads like the ultimate, the Nukes favorite, the chef salad, and so much more. The great sandwiches, Nukes Q, chicken salad, the pimento cheese sandwiches california style pizzas and salads it's joel bromfield it's nukes eatery on university boulevard 205 university boulevard 205-758-2455 catering from a small office party to a larger event it's nukes close enough that you can smell the championships there on university boulevard 
You are listening to Alabama Tradition with Martin Houston and Ryan Fowler. Your connection to Tuscaloosa and the University of Alabama Athletics on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. So we welcome you right back into Alabama tradition. The past, present, and future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. I will tell you that Alabama's doubled up on Kentucky right now. We're looking for a sweep of the season. We talk about Nate Oates in the basketball program, number nine in the country right now, uh, playing Kentucky inside Coleman Coliseum. So Alabama's doubled up. Uh, last time I looked up, a 15 to 7. 15 to 7, Alabama uh, with a big lead. And uh, this will be the first time since 1988 that they have been able to sweep. Uh, the Kentucky Wildcats, so uh, Nate Oates has got everybody believing, uh, and even Nick Saban uh, talking about uh, his program. I, uh, Chris, I'll share you a real funny story with about uh, Nate Oates and, and Nick Saban a couple of uh, days ago. Uh, there was a pretty pretty all-star player, uh, Jordan Bruner, uh, went down with a meniscus tear, and uh, mm-hmm. Saban had asked uh, uh, Nate, he said, well, how long is it before you're going to get your, your, your guy back? And he said, well, it's going to be about four to six weeks. Saban says, Four to six weeks. He said, meniscus? We get them back in two to three. What's wrong with those guys? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. Don't make them like they used to. Those <laughs> basketball guys are not tough like the football guys. He He's it to throw throw that out. He, he tends to throw that out, actually. Yes, that's a, a famous too. phrase of his. They don't make them like they used to. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, and, and, you know, we look at the similarities, and uh, we're going to get some phone calls here, but uh, maybe your number one similarity between Coach Bryant and Coach Saban. Well, I, I think the, the, the visionary ability of both to oversee a program, to coach the coaches, to get everybody to focus. Coach Bryant was famous for this with his staff. He would, he would basically assign teams. So what he would do, he would say, all right, coach so-and-so, so-and-so, and so you three guys are responsible for Tennessee. He would literally pay them extra money. Your job is to find us two or three things that we need to do to beat Tennessee. You three are the ones responsible to figure out what we needed to beat, beat LSU, so on and so forth. What are you guys are and, and it was just of course everybody was involved in every game, but it was an extra way to motivate because if you didn't come up with something, if you didn't do a really good job, you didn't want to let him down. And that was kind of the message that I always got was you didn't want to be the guy to let him down. You didn't want to be if you're responsible for having being prepared for you know, Tennessee and, and maybe the guys that did a better job in preparing for LSU, you didn't want to be that guy. That was his way of motivating, challenging them, getting the most out of them and then rewarding them with, with, you know, a little extra something. It might be, you know, a really nice fancy gift or just money. I mean, it just extra money you throw, them, you know, when the monies weren't great back in those days. So that was real key. The attention, the detail, Nick, is great at delegating. Now the staffs are much larger today, but then there's a whole lot more to do. The more technology you have, the more you can break down, the more things you do. He defines a role for a coaches, players, just like coach Bryant did. But so that is the thing that maybe is the most similar about them, but yet how they did it was different because the game was so much different and the society was different back then. Let's go to Darlene in North Carolina. Darlene, you're on with Chris Landry and Ryan Fowler on Alabama Tradition. Thank you so much, Darlene. You're welcome. How are you doing today, Ryan? Oh, super outstanding. Uh, couldn't be any better. Well, I've enjoyed the stories that Chris has been telling about Bryant. They're really cool. So have I. Hey, Miss Darlene, and I how are you? His conversations during the year very much. Also, I would I would be remiss if I didn't point that out. And we do You're enjoy one of my being favorite guests. Well, we, we do but, enjoy Chris being a part of our show. I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, no, yeah, thank you, Miss Darlene. It's so good to be with the. Uh, 
with you and all the great listeners and of course Ryan. Well, you're very welcome. But Ryan, you you left two things open in the sh- <laughs> the former part of the show. <laughs> Number one, Ryan O'Neill. Ah, okay. All right. So, Chris, I, I, let, me, let me catch Chris up to speed, okay? Somebody called in and asked me earlier about my name, and I brought it up that I was named after a soap opera star. I'm not named after anybody famous. It's just Ryan O'Neill. And so then I started calling out, and people said, who is this guy? I said, you guys are going to have to ask the ladies who listen to the show, because my mom used to tell me, but I have no clue. So I know, you know, we're talking about football. So, uh, so you were named after a soap opera star that was named Ryan, but you don't remember who the Ryan was. Well, I know, I know it's Ryan O'Neill, but I don't know anything about. Oh, Ryan him. O'Neill. Okay, yeah, I got yeah. You. I just don't know anything about. I don't know anything about him, and so that's where I guess I was leaning on Darlene's expertise. Oh, okay. In, in the in the first four hours, you know, my niece um, is named after. Uh, she was my sister's second daughter. And she was named, well, her name is Laura, and she was named after a soap opera girl because my sister and the oldest daughter would watch this soap opera. And apparently there was somebody called Luke and Laura. And so whatever soap opera that was. And <laughs> she I was named. It, but it was General yeah, Hospital. General Hospital, okay, there you go. go. I mean, she, 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 she I was named after Laura. It. Yeah, Everybody how about that? Luke and Laura. Okay, okay. See, I mean, you get all sorts of scouting on this show. But, this uh, is awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah. you never know what you're going to learn. <laughs> well, Ryan O'Neill was probably most famous for one of his first films, which was Love Story with Allie McGraw. And, I mean, that was the one that everybody went to the movie and cried about. And then he also did, I mean, he did a bunch of stuff. He was a very, very good actor. Paper Moon, he did some stuff with Barbara Streisand. Uh, probably most famous for the fact that he was married one, two, or three times to Farrah Fawcett. I was going to ask you that. I was going to say, Miss Darlene, wasn't he yeah. married to the, 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 the gorgeous Farrah Fawcett, who was the, the dream boat for all of us young boys that grew up with that famous orange swimsuit poster that we all had on our wall. Yeah. He was married to her. Well, there and we go. The I mean, I'm learning movie. a lot about Ryan O'Neill. There well, you go, there Ryan. Well, a bunch more movies, you know. Well, I know. Like yeah, yeah. Three. And then the other thing was one of the guys said that way back in the 70s that Bama only played two games, that colleges could only play two games a season. I think it was they were restricted to three. Okay. Oh, you mean on TV? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. There was there was restrictions by the NCAA with with how many you could play. So that is absolutely. That's well, why when they opened when it up, yeah. Alone, my parents would call me on. Would make sure they would call a special. Well, they called every Saturday morning. <laughs> they was going to be on TV this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> Don't miss it. Oh yeah, no. I can remember. You know, I, I remember LSU played um, Alabama to start a season beginning of the year in a slop fest. It was six to three, and in fact, it was seventy nine. I can tell you what it was. LSU, Carly McClendon's last year. Coach Bryant really loved Coach Mack. I mean, because it was one of his boys. But that last year that Coach Mack was there, he played two number one teams in Tiger Stadium, Alabama. Then he played that great USC team and was probably the most famous game in Tiger Stadium that LSU never won. Um, and that was his last season. And um, that was <laughs> during the season it was announced that the North Carolina State coach and former Woody Hayes disciple Bo Ryan was going to replace Charlie McClendon. Bo Ryan takes the LSU job and never coaches a game at LSU. He died tragically in a plane crash um, a, a month after he took the job on a recruiting trip. So, um, but that last wow. year that coach Mack was there, um, it, 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 he played, you know, Alabama in a, in a, in a Alabama was number one Tiger State in a loss. It was like six to three and again, three field goals, sloppy field raining. And then, um, then LSU, you know, lost to, to uh, USC. So, yeah. Darlene, we uh, you want to jump in? Anything else? 
Oh, no. I was just going to catch you up on those two things. Well, thank you. And you've already heard enough Bronx stories. So. <laughs> now, 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 Darlene, you, now, just be honest now. Ryan O'Neill was good looking, but he wasn't as good looking as Ryan Fowler. <laughs> am, am I right? Is that right? Well, that's true. Very true. That's true. It's it's Ryan's show, so Miss Darlene, you must you must make sure that you say that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're since we're reliving all these memories of me, uh, I'll add this to it. Uh, many people may or may not know, but if I shave this beard, I've got a dimple that is literally as deep as you will ever find a dimple. Okay, uh, I have got a hole in my chin, and this will. Oh, that's I, I, the Robert Mitchum. Work. No, no, no. Here's what they called me as a kid. This, this was this was no kid. Uh, they called me Little Kirk for Kirk Douglas because oh. it, it is absolutely. That's why he has dimples too. And and I got so tired of people making fun of this hoe because it's kind of cool when you're a kid, but when you get an adult, you got this thing in your chin, and you know it's kind of hard to shave around. To be honest with you, too. So I just grew a beard. I said, forget you know, it. I'm gonna cover it up. You, you know who has the biggest dimple chin I've ever seen personally in my life? Who? You're going to get to know him real quick because he just joined Alabama staff, Bill O'Brien. Really? Okay. okay. Yes, he does. Okay. He does. He's got He's got a, a real, I you know, it, it it's as big as anyone. I, well, not big, but it's deep, like you said. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know how he'd shave that. You know, I, I don't know how you yeah. shave that. Yeah. Chris, are we going to be happy with him this year? I think you're going to be real happy with him. He's a really outstanding coach, and I think the the fact that he and Doug Marone are coming together is going to be really important. They they like each other, work with one another uh, back in the day, and Doug will have a real influence on the run game, and Bill will really work oversee the entire offense but be really good with the passing game with the quarterbacks. Um, this, this is really good. We haven't even got to it, but since we – we're on last week. Robert Gillespie is a great recruiter. Uh, and then, and then there's trying to get Jay Graham. I mean, it's, this is becoming kind of like an all-star type staff and there's always adjustments, but see, when you get Bill O'Brien and Doug Marone, those are two not adjusting to one another. That's kind of a two for one. They, they already can finish, finish each other's sentences. So I think it's going to work real well. Thank you, Darlene. Well, that's great to hear. Thank you, Mr. Thank Darling. you, Darlene. Have a, have a wonderful evening. We appreciate you being part of the show. You be good. Roll tide. Right back to you, Darlene. North Carolina, Terry Richmond, Virginia. Terry, good afternoon. You're in the game. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Good. How are you? How's everything in beautiful Richmond? It's great. It's great. Um, I've been hearing you on the radio, I bet, 20 years. Haven't, haven't you not? Uh, you talking about Ryan or me? Um, you, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, did did some stuff in Richmond for years too. Um, I think you did. The, I, I yeah, remember for, hearing for you back quite, in a, quite a few times. I can't remember. There were a couple of different hosts there. I did did for quite some yeah. time. And yes, sir. Was it Big Al? <laughs> no, I'm trying to think. Uh, it was Wes. Wes McElroy. Yes, Wes Rack yeah. McElroy, and I. Gosh, I forgot the guy that was before Wes. I feel bad he went somewhere in North Carolina, did some chones with him. Uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, did that. And then they were a big Fox affiliate. And, of course, I was doing a lot of national radio with Fox Sports Radio, right. and they were one of our big affiliates too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, could have been hey, that. Yeah, that, that's great. I, <clears throat> but I wanted to tell you thanks. You That was an awesome tribute to Coach Bryant that you uh, – that you had to lead off the show. I mean, that was great. I really appreciate that. It was. It was, it was great. I mean, I think we're all on the edge of their seat telling those stories. And uh, Chris is a good storyteller about these connections, but uh, taking the knowledge and combining that, it was a lot of fun to hear him uh, kind of go into that. Absolutely. And one of the ones that I've called in, I was on hold when uh, you were telling those. And my probably my favorite, and I was going to tell Ryan this because I don't know, uh, was about – when they uh, installed the wishbone. In that summer, Ryan, that was the summer of 71 when they were starting practice in August, and they used to have a thing called the Skyriders Tour. You remember that, Chris? Yes. Yes, they used to. Instead of everybody going to Birmingham or Atlanta, they'd take, you know, because there weren't as many media, they'd take yeah. 25 or 30 of media folks, and they put them on a plane, and they go to every city. Ten cities, because yeah. there were ten cities. There were ten yeah. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. Go to all the campuses and view practice and everything. Yep. And and Coach Bryan had them out there. He was coming off of two, what, six and five seasons, I think. Yes. And so he had them out there running the uh, pro set and everything. And the writers were saying, yeah, Alabama looks like a middle-of-the-pack team this year, you know, and that's what they wrote. And then opening game was in Los Angeles against Southern Cal, and they broke out the wishbone. Yes, sir. And and, and after the game, <clears throat> you know, Coach Bryant and uh, John McKay were really good friends, and supposedly John McKay met him at you know midfield, and he said, "Where did you get that formation?" <laughs> and uh, Coach Bryant said, well, "I didn't like how we were performing, you know, in the pro set, and." So I, I installed it. So, uh, but uh, and the other thing I wanted to ask you, Chris, you talked about John Mitchell. Yes. And tell me if this isn't right. Wasn't he from Mobile? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And didn't he go to junior college, like in um, Arizona. Arizona or something? Yeah. Arizona. And yes, sir. He sure did. I think uh, John McKay was the one that tipped off. Coach Bryant, and he said, That's correct. we're looking at this guy, and he said, heck, you should sign him. Well, wasn't he Alabama's first African-American player? He was, and um, I don't, I think he would maybe help me, but I, forget, I always get this mixed up. There were two, um, Wilbur and Wilbur I Jackson. One, I don't know which one got in the game first. One or yeah, I'm not sure. So one one of think, them was signed. One of them was signed before the other, and yeah. one of them played in the game. And so it's kind of like you know, but yes, that's exactly right. it. In fact, um, co- one of Coach Bryant's best friends was he was very close with John McKay, and it was mainly due to one of the assistants for John McKay. And okay. they said, you know. The kid with John Mitchell, the, the kid at the time we call him kid, you know, he wants to go back close to home, you know, and, uh-huh. and you know, so he really didn't want to. I mean, I think USC recruited him, but I, I think right. he knew that. And back then in those days, you'd kind of do that. And in fact, if you if you liked the kid and he what didn't want to go to your place, mm-hmm. you didn't want him to go to Auburn or Georgia or LSU. Right. You'd rather him go to, you know, Arizona, whatever, and vice yeah. versa. So. Um, I think that that was kind of the, the main thing, um, that, uh, that, that really got, John, well, I mean, John wanted to come back home. I mean, that was, that was the bottom line. Yeah, and, right. okay. and I think that, um, you know, it was just about this kid's good enough. And I don't oh, know because film, film wasn't as prevalent today. So, right. you know, mm-hmm. you know about John Mitchell, but you lose him for two years and all of a sudden they see him out West and there's a little bit of a buddy network to say, Hey, look, you know, sure. you have my back. Sure. I'll have yours. And yeah, we seen this kid play in person. You ought to really sign him. And then back then you sign him. And if the kid wasn't all that good and John was, well then, you know, what's, you didn't have scholarship limits and all that kind of stuff, but right. that, that was in the time they, and then, you know, you had Sylvester come in, Sylvester Croom. Yeah. And then, right. Yeah. Um, you know, it, was, it was, yeah. it was John Mitchell that really forged the very close relationship with Ozzie Newsom. Not that Ozzy was Absolutely. going anywhere else, but, uh-huh. but, you know, he really developed a that. close relationship with Ozzy. And, you know, if there was any chance of Ozzy leaving, you know, <laughs> I think that was out of the window because of that close relationship. Yeah, because back oh then, you know, TH could do that. Yeah. Coach Bryant loved Ozzy Newsom, didn't he? Oh yeah, Love yeah, him. yeah. It, it, yeah. And the, the and stories I, that you know, um, yeah. Ozzy revered him. You know, anybody yeah. did. He, they, yeah, you know, and really Sylvester Croom also. You know, Sylvester was one of his assistant coaches early on. I mean, it's, he was a graduate assistant, wasn't he? Yes, yes. You, I mean, you, there's you could, pictures of them from like mid seventies in Sylvester on the sidelines coaching. Absolutely. And you could do yeah. those things back then to where, and again, this was coach Brian. He could, he was a great <laughs> fundraiser and all that. So you could like, yeah. you can take care of your GA so they go to school, but you could pay them some money to have like, it, it, we used to have like volunteer coaches, which, what do you think okay. a volunteer yeah. coach? What does that suggest? Well, the volu- you had volunteer coaches making back then 18 grand a year, which is pretty good money mm-hmm. back then, you know? And, and it's things like that. You, but, and then he was, 
Coach Bryan understood the rules, and he understood how to take advantage of it. Kind of, that's another thing, Ryan. That's another Knicks. Hey, get, we, we can have analysts that are not on the field. We're going to have all the analysts. We're going to have the best analysts, and we're going to have the most of them. And you know what? We're going to take advantage of it. <laughs> and let me go out and recruit NFL guys that don't have yeah, a job to right. come back and prepare <laughs> players on the scout team, right? And, yeah. and, 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 and by the way, <laughs> Uh, half of them are getting paid a lot of money by some other school that just fired them, and we can pay them less than anybody else has to pay them, and so we can have even more guys to go along with them. Just <laughs> it's super, it's, it's super, it's really smart, you hey, know, it's really sharp. Terry, uh, I, yeah. I got to I got to get to break, but let me let me add something <laughs> real quick to the John Mitchell yeah. story. Uh, go to Roll Tide and search for Roman Harper, uh, the okay. documentary that he uh, was the the moderator on. Uh, okay. He actually sat down with John Mitchell this year back wow. in December. I know it was kind of missed. We were, uh, you know, in the run of a, you know, undefeated season. Maybe didn't spend as much time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I text Roman and told him Roman. Roman did a brilliant, an absolute brilliant job. And well, thank it, you. Because I will. you never and and I know Chris said he was connected with with John Mitchell. John never tells his story. Rarely do you ever hear him telling his story because he didn't want to really be known as this particular individual, but he finally yeah. opens up and he tells Roman wow. these stories. And I'm telling you, it's on the edge of your seat, uh, cold chills as he's telling these stories that you guys were just sitting here talking about a couple of minutes ago, but I got to, I got to run the break, Terry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Terry, Thank you, Terry. Richmond, Virginia. We will go to Steven Tuscaloosa, Rich and Atlanta, Chris Landry, Ryan Fowler on Alabama tradition, the past, present, and future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Oh, Mark Smart in downtown Northport under that Roll Tide Bridge. You're going to find the great stuffed mushrooms, the stuffed peppers, the twice baked potatoes, the great ribeyes, that high choice that you will find, the fillets, the beef and chicken kebabs, the wonder roast chicken, the chicken swirls, home of the chicken swirl since 1978, the stuffed steak burgers, the Cajun pork chops, the homemade rolls, those great Alabama local products that you cannot find anywhere else. It's our friends at Mark Smart in downtown Northport. Call ahead for those special things at 205-710-5636. You'll find Mark Smart locally owned and operated by Jacob King. Go see the guys. Mark Smart, downtown Northport. Mark Smart. If you want to dominate the grill this weekend, it's Mark Smart in downtown Northport. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. You need parts? O'Reilly Auto Parts has parts. Need them fast? We've got fast. No matter what you need, we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it. Product availability. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Brian Harden Construction, a very diverse business here in West Alabama, serving our community, our neighboring states, and throughout the great state of Alabama. It's Brian Harden Construction, craned equipment rentals, a crane up to 300 ton available, the CNC machines, the reverse engineering, the laser cutting, specialist in modern construction. It's bhardenconst.com, the experience you can count on. Let's build something together, the great services they offer, the leader in the industry, Brian Hard Construction, and they are expanding their team. If you're looking for a job and you are a structural welder, a pipe fitter, or a pipe welder, Brian Hard Construction is looking for you, and you can start that process on bhardenconst.com, bhardenconst.com, or contact them off of Foster's Industrial Drive here in in Tuscaloosa, it's Brian Harden Construction. The host of the game, Ryan Fowler, and the host of the Martin Houston Show, Martin Houston, have combined to offer a show filled with in-depth analysis of Alabama football and more. Alabama Tradition broadcasts live on Tide 100.9 every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. and is available live and on playback on numerous affiliates around the Southeast. Check out alabamatradition.com for a list of affiliates as well as other great content.
All right, so we welcome you right back into Alabama tradition. That's Chris Landry. I'm Ryan Fowler. We'll get right back to the phone call. Steve in Tuscaloosa. Steve, you're on with Chris and Ryan. I hope all is well. Everything's great. How are you doing? Super outstanding. Good, Steve. Okay, I, I'm not sure if y'all have a particular you know, topic of conversation tonight, but I do have something that I wanted to ask your expertise on. You're more involved in, you know, it's about the Alabama basketball team. I'm a huge Alabama basketball fan and have been ever since I moved to Tuscaloosa 40 years, 40 something years ago. But uh, the last time I think I remember going and seeing Alabama playing Kentucky, it was standing room only in the auditorium in Coleman Coliseum. And I had to sneak in through a buddy I knew that worked security on the ground floor and come up through the basement and, uh, in the aisle, but they were the aisles were full. Let me put it that way. I got but you. Anyway, my question is: Did out did the NCAA or did the SEC put out some kind of a? I would call it a reverse dress code for the coaches this year. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, I, they're I, all I, wearing I, they're I, all wearing uh, t-shirts and sweats, huh? I noticed that. Yeah, I don't, well, I don't. I don't know the answer to that. I I really don't. Although Calipari is in a in a sport coat tonight. He's in a sport coat, but he hasn't <laughs> been wearing a tie this year, though. No, uh, yeah, I noticed that. So, and most of those guys, yeah, I don't know. I don't know I what it is. Maybe <laughs> I haven't looked at the other conferences to see if some, you know, the coach of, you know, but I think I saw the coach of Duke with some kind of sweatsuit on, coaching the other night. That's right. No, I, I have noticed that. I have noticed that. Yeah, I don't too. know if it's just, you know, it's kind of like nobody's showing up to the party because there's no fans. Right. We're going to dress down. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I have noticed that. So, uh, and, and I guess I had to eat my own words because the first time I noticed it was was watching Auburn play. And I'm not sure if it was the game against us. And Bruce Pearl was out there and he had his, you know, he just had a polo shirt on and didn't even have it tucked in, you know, just had, you know, hanging, you know. I got just you. hanging, and I said, "Man, that's you know." Hey, I, a couple he, of quick things. He, he things. Oh, I'm to sorry. Do, to do better than that, and then the next thing I know, I flip over on our, you know, see Alabama <laughs> playing. Our coach, he's got a polo shirt on and it untucked. Yeah, I, I wish Look, I. I wish I, I knew. I just don't. I, I, I miss I miss Coach Sanderson's plaid coats <laughs> is what I miss. Real, real quick, two things I read. Coach Sanderson's my my all time favorite. Was remember when Latrell Sprewell went into the NBA and he he choked PJ Carlissimo? R- remember that whole incident? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they asked Coach Sanderson, "Hey, did he ever do that to you?" <laughs> he said, "He said no, nah, but I was one hell of a candidate." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that was, great! That's great. Yeah, he says, uh, "I says, yeah." He says, "I was a hell of a candidate." Oh, man. that's I, awesome. Hey, it was so, it was so great. And I tell you the, the, the right. best Alabama, the best Alabama basketball memory I have. Right. And it was 1976, and it was in the Assembly Center in Baton Rouge in the Mideast Regional in the NCAA playoffs. And I don't know how many people remember, but the last unbeaten, untied team, well, there's no ties in basketball, I'm sorry, last unbeaten team in college basketball is a 1976 Indiana team. And I saw with my own eyes in person, CM Newton's Alabama team taking it to Bobby Knight's Indiana team. And they had them dead in the water. I mean, they were pressing them and it was, it looked like it was over. And that was the game that people forget People remember them coming back and beating Michigan in the championship game in Indiana, you know, all the title, Kent Benson, all that group. But not many people know that the big threat of them that year, because nobody really threatened them in the Big Ten. That was a couple of close games. But Alabama's CM Newton team had them beat, and I guess the late Danny Green would say they let them off the hook, but but I remember that. And uh, then I remember, I remember the great Reggie King and some others. But uh, 
uh, Coach Sanderson is was was a national treasure. Is a national treasure. I'm sorry, I don't mean it past that. And, and, and Steve, I got I got to get to uh, the final call here. We've only got like three minutes left in the show. I'm trying to split it between I'll talk you. To you next time, buddy. Thank you, Steve. Thank Thanks you, man. For calling. Uh, Steve always aggravates me because I don't talk enough basketball, so he's always telling me. But uh, you know, when you got Nick Saban winning six out of the last twelve, it's you know you, you've only got you might, you might be talking about it this year. Now the rest yeah. of the way, if they keep doing this, man, that's impressive. With no doing. doubt, let's get a rich in the line. Rich, I've only got about two minutes. It's all yours, man. Let it rip. Hey Ryan, thanks for taking my call. Thanks, Chris. It's a real honor to talk to you, sir. And I, I speak for all of Ryan's listeners when I say you do a tremendous job and. I hope you can stay with us uh, for the rest of the year because you sure are a lot of fun and you are an absolute encyclopedia of information. And I, and I wanted to thank you for that. And I don't even know where to start. I mean, I was going to ask you, you know, I've been listening the whole time. I was going to say, do you remember when Bobby Knight slammed the phone down here at the, uh, at the, yes, I do. I do. I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, do you remember Clarence Davis? I know you and Terry were having a great conversation. Clarence Davis is the guy that's forgotten in that, you know, when people talk about Wilbur Jackson and John Mitchell, he was the running back from Birmingham. That was at USC that Coach Ryan couldn't recruit, if you recall. That's correct. And he wound up, by, ironically enough, he was Kenny Stabler's running back on the Raiders, remember? That's, that's that's absolutely right. There's no question about it. Yeah, no, and that was, you know, we, we'll get into it. I know we're running short of time, but going back right. to that old USC, you know, home and home, you know, you never quite, the story was like, it's not told, but was kind of understood. And people that were there that Coach Bryant knew what needed to have happen, but he also knew in Alabama with the governor how he needed to handle things with integration. And there's a lot of belief that those games were scheduled with the idea to, to kind of open people's right. eyes to, you know what, if we don't uh, join the party, then this is what we're missing. And, you know, and somehow some of the stories may be, you know, exaggerated but the premise of why he did it and what happened and in some cases the whooping they took and sam bam cunningham um yep. all that was 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 done for a reason and and was done orchestrated and was done by his relationship with john mckay and again his his really good friend that he also had on right. his staff we are out of time rich hey, I'm, hey. I'm so sorry brother uh, that's all right. I was going to ask him one more thing. That's all right. I'll call him next week. Yeah, please do. Next do. week. Please, please do, do it. Thanks for the text. Uh, Thanks, Chris. Yeah, Chris Thank Landry, you. LandryFootball.com. Uh, LandryFootball.com. Chris, we got like seconds to get out of here. I really appreciate it as always. It's a lot of fun. And this hour flies by, man. It's crazy. It, it really was. A lot of fun. Really, really appreciate everybody calling in and looking forward to doing it again next week. LandryFootball.com. Big thanks to James Ludeman, the entire team over on Tide 100.9. We will continue. James Ludeman takes you for the next two hours right here on Tide 100.9, the home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. This might not be an easy time. There's rivers across and hills to climb. Some days we might fall apart. Some nights might feel cold and dark But nobody wins afraid of losing And the hard roads are the ones we're choosing Someday we'll look back and smile And know what we're America, we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By honoring your sacred vocation of nursing, you impact your family, your friends, and your community. At Grand Canyon University, our online RN to BSN, MSN, or DNP degree programs allow you to balance online coursework with local in-person clinical, practicum, or immersion hours. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu.